and knowing that that's going to take years off of my life, which realistically is like sitting in my car, greeting to my girlfriend. I don't know how I'm going to make a living out of this. I don't know everything's going down the drain. There's nobody really that's like the pinnacle pioneer of natural bodybuilding. Yeah. This is where Josh Campbell is going to come in 100%, mate. I don't want to get really cancelled for that, <laughs> but that's the difference between assisted bodybuilding or natural bodybuilding. So like Josh has a tannin sock that he uses for his yeah. shows, and, and it's not like a, a sock that goes on your foot. <laughs> yeah. That is a sock that goes over your penis. <laughs> Welcome back to episode four of the Don Diaries, and today I actually need to read off my phone for the introduction for this guest because he's won pretty much everything. Five times teen champion, two times British champion, teen British champion and two-time overall champion, Mr. Josh Campbell. How are we doing, bro? Thanks yes. for coming on, bro. Thanks Appreciate it. Appreciate yeah, no worries at all, man. Been, is that me up there? Yeah, that's you up there, bro. We've got a few, ca- we've got a few different cameras rolling, man. So you, to me. You, ju- you just look at this big, beautiful face, all right, bro? <laughs> now, Josh, your growth has been nothing short of absolutely amazing, to be honest with you, mate. Um, it, it's been really, really good to see. And generally, it could not have happened to a more deserving guy, mate. You put such hard work into everything that you do, mate. And it's really inspiring to see, to be honest with you. And that's exactly the reason why I wanted to kind of get you on the podcast, because is you do like really really interest me i was saying this obviously before the podcast on the way up but you are a very interesting person to me because you literally have just turned 19 yet you are so dedicated and committed like honestly i've never seen it before so for anybody that's tuning in that maybe doesn't know who you are who is josh campbell what do you do bro all right so first of all um my job, similar to Adam, obviously he's the, the pod done and everything, right? <laughs> but my main source of income is being an online coach. So I help people get into shape and now actually getting people like onto stage next year now that I've kind of went into my bodybuilding and stuff. So been doing that for around two years or so. Obviously this year is my first season as a competitive bodybuilder. So that started around three years ago, like just when I started doing the gym um, in my, my living room in lockdown with like some weed shitty weight so it was <laughs> horrific had no clue what I was doing like one rep maximum deadlifts every day but yeah been going to the gym around three years or so now in my like kind of the end of my competitive season for bodybuilding I'll be flying out to Romania in six days exciting or, no in three days I actually compete in six days so that's extremely exciting really much looking forward to it but and sorry just to interrupt you for, for people that maybe don't know what what is a bodybuilding season if you want to right, say right okay yeah I'm forgetting that not a lot of yeah. people yeah, like, I, I speak about it as yeah. Yeah. It's like everyone knows, but pretty much like in bodybuilding, when you compete, that's when you'll be getting a lot leaner. So you have your off season, like your kind of gaining phase, your bulking phase, etc. That's when you're applying the muscle and getting what is needed for you to be able to look good when you are lean. But then you'll go through the actual prep itself. So that's when you get a lot leaner, when you get to like unhealthy levels of lean. But you need to can you need to be able to hold that for a long time, and that is why I feel like shit right now. <laughs> this is um, why he's wearing a beanie. Yeah, and it I'm is gonna real. take this off halfway through as well because oh, I'm rolling, I'm sweating my yeah, tits yeah. off, and then I'm freezing, <laughs> and then it's like it's so inconsistent but yeah so in a bodybuilding season like uh, depends how you want to do it like for my first season I'm doing a lot of shows I've got seven in total which is more than we planned to be fair but usually someone will do maybe one to like three shows you've got like qualifiers and then finals for different federations there's different federations in bodybuilding in general but I have been prepping so like the fat loss part phase of it for 30 weeks now so nearly eight months of dieting i'm on i've done five shows so far going from a sixth and my sevens which are both going to be international ones but yeah crazy i know very exciting times so we'll talk about all the other kind of shows a wee bit later on in the podcast but first of all with a big guest i want to take it right back to the beginning so what what do i need to understand about young josh to then understand the josh that's sitting in front of me and to be honest it isn't that much time ago that you were young Josh because you're still yeah, only yeah, 19 still, yeah. which is absolutely crazy just but out of high school yeah talk, talk to me about your, your early stages in life then when you were a wee guy what you can first remember and then moving into kind of primary school and stuff yeah so 
always been a very competitive kid and person in general. So, like, my brother and dad are both very active and into like fitness, etc. Um, especially my dad, like, he would always challenge us as kids. It's like, you need to be better than me at this. So, whether that be badminton, table tennis, pool, like, when we're always playing something, it's like, you need to be shooting to be better than what you are right now and take me on. So, always had that kind of competitiveness and getting absolutely raging. If my brother beat me at something or if my dad beat me at something, just the usual. Um, but, like, as a kid, just your, your kind of standard, to be fair. Like, in primary school, usual. Not too much like a troublemaker. Like, somewhat shy. Like, not too outgoing. Um, just kind of cracking on with things and stuff. Um, but, yeah, just your usual average childhood, yeah. I would say, pretty much. Yeah. yeah. And, and so that that's interesting as well, that kind of shy thing. You weren't somebody that was... I mean, for me, I was, like, a pure class clown. Yeah, yeah, always trying yeah. to show off and stuff like that, but... That was that wasn't like that with you. You were more pretty reserved and yeah. Um, I was in what well, you'd maybe say the, the popular group in school. Like it's so childish thinking about that. Like oh, there's a popular group, the group of weirdos, this and that. Um, but like always, just kind of in that. I had a good group of mates. Like never too again outgoing, doing anything too daft. Like it was literally just your usual average person pretty much but like it's weird now like see if i thought back then that i'd be on a podcast that i'd be making youtube videos be doing instagram where i speak to a camera to thousands of people i'm like oh jesus like terrifying so it is weird to think about but yeah yeah. Well, it shows how much that you've obviously you've grown as a person, Adapted, and yeah. I think we are just touching on like you know posting on social media and obviously being terrified or maybe being a wee bit shy when you were younger to now doing that. Yeah. It's just about breaking past that barrier. You were probably absolutely exactly. shite scared to do that for the very very first yeah. time, and then you get that over and done with, and it's like right, okay, I've done it once, like I yeah, can exactly. do that again like now. That's, like me and Adam were speaking in the car about that. It's like in terms of like coaching business etc like that first time like I remember my first coach Cruz telling me like you need to like put yourself out there more in terms of show your personality more I was like I can't do it I can't do it I can't do it and I was like oh people are wanting to just see how smart I am and how much I can write about training but like no one really wants to see that they want to see your personality they want to see you as a person so like having to kind of force yourself into those situations like even with this podcast it's like imposter syndrome it's like Mm -hmm. do people actually want to listen to this do they want to hear me like am I interested enough to even do this but like setting yourself out from those kind of mental barriers and those putting yourself into those uncomfortable positions is what's going to make you grow so yeah and th- there's definitely people interested in you bro for sure you've amassed a, you. an almost cult like following if, if you want to say <laughs> which we'll obviously talk about in, yeah. in more detail later on in the podcast so pretty standard kid then moving into high school then talk to me about your, your kind of years in high school because it was only about two years ago <laughs> yeah pretty much just out of it yeah yeah um, so <laughs> In high school, first of all, grades and stuff were pretty solid. Um, I got my nat fives and my hires. So nat fives, I can smoke them seven A's. Yeah, did you? But yeah. that, the thing was, like, that was the year where it was COVID. Like, it kind of messed up the exams a little bit. So we never actually sat exams. We'd done, like, prelims, which people always say, like, oh, yeah, you don't need to sit the real exams. Like, it's easier. But no one puts in the same amount of effort for a prelim as you do an exam. Like, you get a prelim, you're going to be like, oh, fuck it, I don't care. Yeah. Like, so, so everyone absolutely done horrific on the prelims because we didn't realise that that was going to be our final results. Um, but overall, high school itself, again, going through it, like, still, pretty much just that shy kind of like just not outgoing no nothing special um just kind of keeping to myself then we got to what fourth year done exams got my my nat fives my hires that's when like you know people usually like when they hit i mean in scotland it's probably different because it is this but like drinking for like 14 but like people usually like once they can get into clubs and stuff that's when they do all their drinking and everything but with me it was a case of when i was like 14 15 16 that's when i got all my drinking done so fourth year and fifth year little bit of six year um that's when there was just a lot of that but then that's when i started to get into fitness it's like kind of fifth year time so um that's when i started to take everything a little bit more seriously i remember in p like my teacher mr miller he was into the gym and i was always trying to like chase down his bench numbers and everything he, he would rip the piss out of me for that shout out mr uh, miller by the way you've created a beast go, absolute <laughs> go. Um, but no like 
over high school, like the sixth year, my sixth year was pretty much pointless, to be honest. Like I, I didn't get anything from it because I knew that I was going to be chasing like this down, like with coaching, with fitness, etc. And I'd got what I needed in terms of grades. I never had the intentions of going to uni anyway. Like my mum was like, Josh, you need to go to uni, you need to go to uni. And we ended up like falling out quite a lot, like because of it, because I was like, no, mum, I want to go down this line of doing what like this is. So say the maybe like a PT course, online coaching. And I was like, oh, I'm going to get sponsored and do this and become an influencer realistically that didn't happen like with like oh, i want to become a tiktok influencer and, and stuff like that but i knew that i wanted to do something along the lines with the fitness fitness industry itself so six year barely turned up for it would be like i think i chose practical metal work i chose sports development and business ended up dropping out of business so i'm going for like one class of sports development a week just metal work, work and sports metal work. we were just slapping each other with like fucking big bits of metal and wood like there was nothing to it i gained absolutely zero from that year but what i did do as i said that i had work experience at the gym i just fuck off and go to the gym um, and just enjoy that but like that's when I kind of built the foundations of like everything that I've got set in place so it was good but um, it meant I got to spend more time with my friends as well and sexually like we all kind of ripped to piss a bit too so it was like a good laugh for yeah. us like that year like what you'd maybe call like a gap year or something like we all just kind of messed about and so yeah, was good. I, I think that was the same as me I think that was the same as every pupil well most pupils in Scotland in six year you're just yeah. the only reason that I was there in six year was just to stay on so that I could go to prom pretty much and I was the same I just never went in or whatever exactly. but that, that was interesting as well that was one of the questions that I actually wanted to ask you about because I've never actually seen you out drinking and not not that obviously drinking's to be on end of I'm, yeah. I'm kind of similar to you as well I don't really drink that often but are you in a position now where you just don't drink at all Obviously, I know that you're doing the, the yeah. bodybuilding show, so obviously you're not going to drink, but I didn't actually know that you went through, you know, 14, yeah. 15, 16. Everyone does. I know, everybody yeah. does, everybody yeah. does. But now, what is your mindset towards drinking? Because the reason I want to ask you about that is, again, you're, you're really, really young, and obviously when you're young in Scotland... It's the culture you're surrounded by, and it's... Yeah, like, it's just everybody gets mad with if it. If you want to socialise with someone and see your mates, your only option is yeah, to drink. Is to get drunk, yeah, you know? exactly, so... Again, like through like fourth, fifth year, just going to gaffs and out in fields and going to the beach, like shit like that, like that scarred me, man. It was rough because I remember I wouldn't get any hangovers at all. So I was like, sound, that's fine. And then one time I was in pit lockery for my mate Jude's birthday and took it too far. And we were going cliff jumping the next day. It was just like 40 foot cliff that we always used to go cliff jumping off, right? So I wake up and I just get hit like a truck, mate. Oh my Horrific. god. Horrific. Bro, honestly, I thought you were about to say I get hit by a rock or something. Yeah, yeah, like, shit. Life, life <laughs> um, but no, like, it was so bad. I've never had a hangover before and it was rough. And Jude's mum came in and she was like, Do you remember? I was like, Remember what? Please tell me. Don't tell me something <laughs> Don't bad. Don't tell here. me I was trying to graft you last night. <laughs> <laughs> I woke up and she was like, the bathroom walls, the bath itself, just sick all over them. And I was at uh, no chance. Because I'd never had like a hangover or anything. Then went, jumped off this cliff. And I was just like, mm -hmm. halfway down, spewing the water and everything. I was like, this is not worth it. And ever since then, been getting hangovers every time I drink. Realistically, don't like the taste of drink. I don't know people, I don't understand if people do like the taste of drink. No, I don't. The only thing that I would somewhat consider enjoyable would be like a copper burger or something. Mm -hmm. Like something that just tastes like fruit juice. But realistically, if you drink multiple of them, it's like, yeah, I just feel pure bloated, sick, and it's too sweet. Um, so even if I wasn't bodybuilding, now i don't think i would drink because yeah. i find it as a waste of money makes you feel like shit the next day doesn't taste nice the only time i would actually get drunk or a time i would drink is to properly get drunk for like a social occasion it wouldn't be just like oh yeah i'm gonna have like a, a beer with my dinner or something uh, mm. so um i haven't drank since christmas christmas eve and before that it was my birthday so that's like pretty much a year because i've only drank once within that year and that was because no one the thing is usually right so you see my ideal christmas eve before it would be sitting down playing some Fortnite with the boys just sat there on xbox doing nothing but they were all out drinking so i was like what am i left to do mm -hmm. um and I ended up went out drinking had three ciders absolutely gubbed um i remember after after one and a half i needed a piss got up for the toilet and you know that way we were just kind of like 
Oh, are we the, it one and a half ciders, <laughs> man? That is so you look at yourself in the mirror and stuff like that yeah, as yeah, well, yeah. and you're like, oh, fuck, I'm drunk. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Honestly, like, after one and a half ciders, I was like, ah, it's just time to call it a fucking night for me. I had three ciders, I remember I just sat at the pub table, just with my head down, like, ah, I want to go to bed. I don't want to be here. Um, so drinking, ah, not not really for me. Yeah. Not something that I enjoy anymore. I think it's just about, like, I'm not saying that don't drink. Like, as you were saying, like, it's everything in moderation for, like, a lot of my clients will be like, yeah, I've got like this coming from that yeah go for it as, as long as you can work around that like especially if you've got fitness goals etc if you're going out on the saturday night but you're using that as an excuse to be off track the whole saturday eat off plan like not do anything not train and then the next day you're so brutally hung over that you don't do anything possibly even a two-day hangover where you've got monday off as well it's like it's just not worth it is it yeah it doesn't really tie hand in hand especially when you're you know you're taking your fitness seriously and i'm i'm not i'm definitely not the same as you because i definitely go out and drink but yeah. only like i said on see if it's like a big occasion like my yeah, pals birthdays or you know uh, me and my pals haven't been out for ages like i'm happy to do that but then always you wake up the next day and it's just you're filled with regrets like you said you've it's pointless, you know it? you've spent so much money you feel absolutely terrible it could be getting to like the tuesday wednesday and you're still kind of not feeling a hundred percent you're in the gym and it's uh yeah a hundred percent agree with you and i think especially you like bodybuilding is, is pretty much going to be your career now and you need yes. to obviously put a focus on that as well so yeah usually with most guests we then move on to what they've done after high school but this is pretty much what you're doing <laughs> in the current time yeah. just now so you then stayed on to six year was it just a case leaving school and getting straight your qualification or how, how did that come about yeah so left sixth year and that was when there was still a lot of controversy around like my family like we were all everything was tits up because like my mum was because my brother as well like he's self-employed he runs a, a tuning business um a car tuning business so my mum was like these are both going to be doing that and you aren't going to be getting uni degrees you aren't going to be doing anything she was all worried about that um my dad was like you should do what you want <laughs> like, come on dad um but my mum wasn't convinced about it so i was like that's all right i'll do a pt qualification then if that's going to make you happy so i uh, started doing my level two and level three pt qualification just online because you uni that would be taking four years at college it would take two years whereas online like you just blast through it however you want to i was doing that got my level two qualification got that sorted got like halfway through my level three one so obviously finished school around what like june july time ish mm -hmm. um throughout then was like trying to build the business i had like I want to say maybe like 10 clients or so and I was like oh, this is going good and that is when I started in curries as well so I forgot to mention that in six year I was working in curries I think 16 hours a week 1.24 hours a week which was a bit stressful like at the time like I thought I was the busiest person alive man because I had school five times a week so I was like oh my god realistically I would be going in for like a one class at like half 10 or something but then training as well then doing two short shifts during the week then two full shifts at the weekend and I was like god this is rough so I was like right I really want to knuckle down on actually building this business and allowing this to be my full-time job so that was what I kind of set out to do after leaving school and it didn't properly turn around until February of this year February of this year because that's when I went down to see my coach Finn so with Noah who is now out in Japan shout out to Noah yeah, he's yeah. wild isn't it I know it's um, crazy I've so spoken to him the other day actually cool. Japan, like, I know. it'd be such a cool thing to do like living out there I think he's there for like 12 weeks or so but him and I went down he's Finn's co-coach so we went down to see him for two or three days to train with him and being around him made me realize how much more I could be doing with my time how much more productive I could be less procrastination putting out more content leveling up that content because as I was saying to you it's like instead of just putting something like a screenshot of you training and like explaining something about training like you're not showing your personality you're not showing anything realistically a coach at the end of the day if you don't know what their personality is like and if you don't know how they work and and what they're just like as a person no one's going to want to work with you so it was come back from there uh got in contact with evan evan farquhar um he does some like filming and editing stuff so ended up getting some content with him started playing with the idea of starting a YouTube channel, just putting some content up and being more kind of present and more showing my personality on social media. And as I've done that, put out more kind of educational content, entertaining content, valuable content itself, like the business started to grow better. So um, then it's just kind of history from there. But I remember like around... 
what, like August time. That was when everyone had kind of dropped off for summer. So like I had the people like coming up for summer. It's like, oh, I want to get into shape and diet for that. And then they all dropped off and I had one paying client at the time. I think one or two paying clients. And I remember sitting in my car, greeting to my girlfriend, Casey, saying like, I don't know how I'm going to make a living out of this. I don't know everything's going down the drain. Um, Like hated curries itself and had one paying client. So I was making 80 quid a month. Mm -hmm. And I was like, this is not sustainable. I don't know what I'm going to be doing with my life. But when I knuckled down and started actually putting the effort into it that I know that I, I definitely should have been getting something back from it, then that's when it all started to change. So Yeah, then it definitely has changed as well. And we'll get we'll get into the, the kind of growth. I want to I want yeah. to go back a wee bit on the story and just talk through so so you were with a coach originally when you were kinda of first getting your PT qualification, is that right? Mm-hmm. Is that when you were with Cruise? Yeah, so I started with Cruise what were we started with cruise july 2021 mm-hmm. so that was like six years time um when i was going through that i believe because yeah it would have been july 2022 when i finished school it's hard it seems like ages ago really it wasn't that yeah. not that long ago but it does feel like quite a while ago um but like we set the foundations there, he held me accountable, but I just wasn't mature enough to actually take it all in. Like I was still that 17 year old that didn't really understand the importance of all these things. He'd be like, right, get your steps on. And I was like, it's just steps, who cares? Mm-hmm. Not realising that like, it was so much better for like my mental side of things and just like overall productiveness. And again, like just sitting playing my Xbox all day and like trying to find ways to just do nothing. And like, instead of actually working, doing all these sort of things. So yeah cruise 2021 i think that was for around eight months to a year maybe um and that was really good really productive but then like i decided i wanted to take it like a step up and go on to a bodybuilding stage and at that point i'd been listening to finn and reese's podcast quite a lot and i was like i'm going to inquire with finn and reese um and ended up going with finn but yeah and is that is so you literally just heard about Finn and just through the podcast, like you already kinda knew who he was. Mm. Yeah. yeah, yeah, true. Here we go. I know, here you we know. go. We're on one. <laughs> he's, uh, he's uh but so, so you found out about him well, you knew who he was, you were listening to his podcast and then that's yeah, yeah. where what what was it about Finn? Because I don't know too much about Finn, but what was it about Finn that, you know, grabbed your attention, you're like, No, this is a guy? Because at that time you're then like that, no, this is serious, I want to go on stage and that's yeah, like yeah. a lot of trust to put in somebody. Yeah, so what, what was that about Finn that, that grabbed your attention? On the podcast, like, with a coach as well, like it literally goes back to what I was saying about, like, actually liking the person and having a relationship with him, being able to respect them enough as a coach to be like, right, he's told me to do something, I'm going to do it, but also be able to see him as kind of like a, a, a friend, not, like, ripping the piss to the point where, again, he's got, like, no, like, actual authority over me and I'd be like, oh, yeah, shut up, I'm not going to make that change. It's like, I actually liked him. As a person, I really liked the way that he would train, like all the the posts that he would put up, it was very impressive, like, and the consistency that he had, it was like on the ball, no missing, no nothing, and I knew that he just knew what he was talking about, I liked the way that him and Reese both came across in the podcast, it was like I knew that they would be good coaches, they would take me seriously, they could see where I could go, but again, I could also have a good relationship with them, so Mm -hmm. I think that's what stood out the most to me, like that actual relationship and being able to actually be good mates with him as well yeah for sure and it's Finn then primarily I take it just a coach that gets people ready for bodybuilding shows or does he do a picture of both nah he is I would say he's probably got like 25% competitive then 75% normal um I say normal but that's just like still like physique aspirations and like getting into shape it's less I don't think as many like just kind of normal punters as like people that really want to like improve themselves but he's definitely started to get more like competitive people as this season has went through because before he'd only like prepped a couple of people but I knew again I knew what he was talking about he was coached by AJ Morris who's sort of like the kind of godfather of natural bodybuilding who's really really knowledgeable and I know that he would have got a, a lot of good knowledge off of him um, but like this season is when he's really set himself as like a, a good competitive like bodybuilding coach because no one really seen him as that I don't think or not they didn't see him as that it's just that he hadn't really had enough experience in the game but obviously with myself and like taking these titles and then Jack as well his other client is five times champ like so five for five to um two times british champion and a lot of his clients doing very well he's got a lot more people that are into the competitive side now so mm-hmm. yeah and in, in in terms of finn like you mentioned that uh, that he was the kind of guy that that you know that 
was going to get you on stage. But what what about before then? What was it or who was it that, that made you want to go on stage? Because I know that you were into the gym and stuff, but obviously going on stage is like a, a yeah. big kind of thing. So was there something out there that, that made you want to do it? Or was it just more like, oh, I'm into the gym, I might as well do it? Pretty much. Like, I wanted something to work towards. Like, when I started training, it was again in my living room with some weights that my brother bought off some mad dodgy Polish guy. Um, could barely speak any English. It was like There's, all, was there's just, always mad dodgy <laughs> Polish guys that sell yeah. weights for some reason, isn't there? We all know one. Roy's massive. <laughs> well. um, but yeah, like he bought just loads of like old rusty plates, a little one kg bar that was rough as well, man. I remember in the the kind of man cave is what we used to call it. That used to be my room um, where we had the Xbox, the big TV, etc. But then that kind of slowly turned just into the gym. So we built a squat rack out of two concrete buckets or two buckets with concrete in them and then loads of like big wooden just like poles coming out of it and then there was like a bench rack there was a squat rack um is this during covid yeah 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 that's during during covid COVID, so there was that um and then you know i forgot where we even i think uh (laughs) what what got us into body no what what made me want to get into bodybuilding yeah yeah yeah, yeah. right that's where i was going with (laughs) jesus um so I was doing like kind of power lifting and stuff there because that's realistically all I had. I had a bar and some weights. So I was doing deadlift, squat and bench and Paisley Barbell as well. Like they were kind of like seeing some of the stuff I was putting on TikTok and I was like mates with a few of them there. So I was like, I might do a powerlifting competition. Um, and I started doing that. But then my back, I'm sure powerlifters will I can relate to this, like your lower back. See if you're squatting, you're deadlifting, you're benching, like if you're doing that very consistently throughout the week. And at the time, I had no clue how to actually like, periodize it or anything. I was just absolutely hammering myself every single time. I ended up getting a few injuries. And I was like, right, that's powerlifting out the window. So I was like, what's the next thing that I could do? And at that point, like that's when I was starting to do like TikTok and stuff. So they like, posting some like stupid, relatable kind of, just like your gym talk content that was back in 2021 and there was people like mentioning like competing and stuff and I was like hmm, that sounds fun I didn't realize what it was going to entail at that time but I was like right I'm getting bigger getting better at that point it was just like funneling down the most disgusting horrible food no not like horrible food but it was like just loads of fat I would have I mean I used to have chicken nuggets like that I would make so I'd have chicken breast I'd have breadcrumbs I'd put 60 grams of olive oil in a big <laughs> walk and cook them in that mate. it was like the greasiest yeah, most disgusting yeah. thing ever just like funneling down food to get as big as I could so like to get weight on because naturally I'm that kind of skinny little small like skinny child that really struggles to put on weight like I've always had like a like a wee four pack or six pack like throughout my whole life but never had any muscles so it was just like tried to get as big as possible make as much progression in the gym because I found something that was good at that I enjoyed I was like I really like this and then when I started to post content it started to get kind of actual like attention and traction I was like I quite like this okay and then eventually I was like right next step probably a bodybuilding show that's when I started working with Finn but again like I was saying this to you in the car as well I don't really realize that I'm fully into something and really going to be doing it until the time so I just thought oh fuck it, it's a bodybuilding show I'll be fine until I actually got there and realized like I'm starting to prep I was like I'm actually doing a bodybuilding sure, show yeah. here yeah like this is actually real mm-hmm. so yeah, that's you know about what it was. Yeah, and that, that's really interesting. I didn't actually know that, that you tried power building first of all, a power yeah, lifting. Sorry, yeah. I should say for anybody that doesn't know the difference of power lifting and bodybuilding, power lifting is more. It's like your squat, bench, deadlift, but it's mostly like you know one rep max is where you're yeah. lifting like heavy, but so only for can, like yeah. Um, it's who can do the most across the three lifts. So like your totals, you get your squat, your bench, your deadlift, um, and it is like just a one rep max of who has the best total throughout that. Yeah, so. and that and that's then most that just kind of strength orientated then the, the people that are power lifters usually don't really care about their, like the way that their physique yeah. looks and stuff like that and they usually do look actually not fat but like yeah, they're, yeah. they're usually holding more adipose tissue would be a, a nice um, <laughs> what's that nice, adipose tissue adipose tissue yeah some, some fat, the fat. So, yeah, uh, um, but like that's better for them like performance wise like if you're holding more weight you've got more stability around your joints especially for those bigger movements like that's going to be more productive for that whereas with bodybuilding it's more of like you need to keep an eye on your body composition because if you're going to be competing you can't be starting 
too heavy because then you're going to be gubbed and doing too much cardio and having too much weight to pull off and it's going to be extremely unhealthy so mm -hmm. bodybuilding versus powerlifting but again it goes back to like that competitive nature of wanting to be the best or, or be better than someone else it's something that's always wanted to kind of try and prove myself in the terms of the gym have something to work towards where I could actually be competitive if yeah. you get me yeah, no, I like that. I like that. And so when you when you then started with Finn, what point when you went on board with Finn was that a case of I'm going on board to him because I definitely want to do shows, or did you start working together and then you're like, right, okay, like this yeah, is the time. So I said to him that I would like to do shows in the future. Again, I had no clue how it all worked anyway, so I was like, whatever you think. And then when he started me up, he was like, right, we're competing next year. So we were we were exciting here, um, and then he was like, "Right, I want you to be chasing down British titles for next year." He was like, "I want you to to make sure that we're nailing everything because you do have good potential, like my shape, my structure, my physique, and again how my body works. Like I can get lean relatively easily, so he knew that I'd be get be able to get into good condition. And condition again for people that don't know bodybuilding too much, like you could have the biggest guy ever, but if they're fat or not fat, but if they're not like true three K stage condition, the person that's in true." three K stage condition will win every time. So it's like he knew that I had good potential, but when I started with him I was still that little bit immature. Like I would still be a bit off on my step goals. I wouldn't check in with him in time sometimes and be like, oh sorry mate, I'll just send it over later. But that's when I realised like he was like, mate, I don't have time for you to not be checking in. He was like, I have stuff to do. You should be having stuff to do. You should make sure that you're actually on the ball with us to make sure that you're getting the most out of this process and doing what you can to be able to to be productive and and to be able to produce good results on stage as well and that's when I kind of realized and like was honest with myself and like right I need to be doing better here so he really instilled in me like to have that routine that structure to my days because before again it was like sometimes I'd wake up at like 12 o'clock on a Saturday on a Sunday and then even throughout the week if I wasn't because obviously I wasn't in school anymore and I was working in Curry's didn't have like a set kind of nine to five job I'd be working on some certain days half the time I'd wake up at like 11 o'clock 12 o'clock and it's like I had no structure to the day I'd be sat eating my last meal because I was gaining as well so I'd be sat eating my last meal at like one or two o'clock in the morning then that meant if I wanted to get a good eight hours of sleep I'm back up at 11 or 12 the next day and it was just that constant cycle of me feeling just lazy as fuck yeah and okay. just feeling like unproductive and, and pretty shit in myself so Finn was like right let's change this in so that's when I realized right set an alarm get up at the same time when I wake up it's not a case of sit for 10-15 minutes and scroll on my phone while in bed because then you just get cozy and you just sit there and you've wasted the first hour of your day it's like get up right out of bed walk first thing in the morning hydrate myself and get a good productive start to the day so I think that's the most kind of beneficial thing that I got from Finn when I started with him it was like we're going to set in for these shows, but you need to understand like what you need to do to improve before going into then. So before it was like as well, like I'd maybe miss a leg day here or there. And it was like, or even if I got like in for a leg day, it would be like, I'll apply myself for the first few exercises. And if I really just couldn't be bothered with the last couple, I'd be like, yeah, sound, I'm not going to do it. But it's like, I made that change with him to make sure I was on the ball with everything. So, okay. so he's instilled, you know, just that, that kind of discipline aspect yeah. pretty much and just making sure you're like, 100% on the ball 24-7 because you do obviously now that you're you're in the shows you've got some big massive goals in place so you're maybe not the the average well you're definitely not the average kind of gym goer anymore and now this is like a point of right okay this is actually going to be my career so I need to take yeah. it seriously and when when this time was happening you said that when you were still with Finn you were still a wee bit immature were you still at Curry's then for a, a part of that? Yes so started with Finn what we're we talking July 2022 mm -hmm. Now, first couple months, I remember I went to Zante end of July and that ruined me again because, again, I, I kind of stopped drinking by that point. I still wasn't. I was taking the gym more seriously, but, like, it wouldn't be the case of, like, well, I'm not going to drink because I've got the gym the next day. Like, I still wouldn't care. I would still drink if I wanted to, but realised that I just didn't like it, didn't enjoy how it tasted, waste the money, hangover, etc. So I hadn't really been drinking and then just went straight into a week of full-on bevy and, like... And I was somewhat consistent, like a little bit, like with my bedtimes. So it would go from like going to sleep at 12, waking up at 8, to then going to sleep at 7 in the morning, waking up at like 1 in the afternoon. So that complete routine change. And then all the drinking, everything, and the nutrition when it was there. The, the best thing about it was you would wake up in the morning, right? get up, you would go into the wee cafe bit that was in the hotel and they'd serve the, the best chocolate pancakes ever. And it was either 
it's going to come flying back up or it's going to be the best thing in the world going to cure your hangover but when I got back mate it was like I am ruined so it took me like a good like three weeks four weeks because I just felt shit and again like I was still immature it wasn't a case of right get back into routine and that's what I needed to do to just get back in like a couple of days where I was in routine I would have been sound but I put it off I was like oh I don't know I don't know and then that was like a month of me just doing nothing then it was pretty shit from there then throughout November slash December I had a lot of digestive issues as well and that's when I found out or that's when I got diagnosed with IBS as well so um, a lot of digestive issues because again being that skinny kid I've always had to push my food really really high and um, like the kind of 4,000 calorie plus like when I was used to if I if I just ate what I wanted to eat on a day like I'll maybe eat two meals or three meals a day at that point maybe like 1,500 calories but I was like shoveling down 4,000 I think that created some digestive issues with my stomach probably yeah I know exactly <laughs> my 60 grams of yeah, olive yeah. oil and my, my chicken and I used to make protein pancakes it would just be like a Mars bar or like a, a Balkan a Balkan shake yeah, I'd be like yeah, yeah bro Balkan shake <laughs> it'd be Mars bar it'd be full fat ice Nutella, cream it'd be that. Nutella yeah, it'd yeah. be milk protein powder oats everything I'd be like oh, a couple of raspberries in yeah. there it sounds <laughs> uh, we're all good um, we'll get some fruit and it'll make it healthy yeah, but yeah. it was like that wouldn't have done my stomach very well and throughout that November slash December like I was quite inconsistent with that with foods I remember in Curry's Strange thing was the only thing that would digest somewhat all right was a McDonald's. So see Curry's, it was right across the McDonald's. You could get the Curry's meal that was one ninety nine for a double cheeseburger, medium chips, and a medium drink as well. So I get two Curry's meals and I just scan that pretty much every time I went in for a shift. And I was like, what am I doing here, man? And like we ended up just like all kind of again came down to that routine and that structure making sure that's when we kind of implemented like a meal plan as well because before I was like I'd eat what I want like I wasn't ripping the piss with it but because it was different food sources every single day like my stomach wasn't really getting used to the same things so we implemented a meal plan at the same things every day and over time it just got a little bit better but from that time that I started with him to the start of prep so I started prep March 27th I know that exact date um it's been what kind of 30 32 weeks since then but I left Curry's July that's, so. so that's what I wanted to talk about at what point did you did you then leave Curry's because I want to talk about your business obviously as yeah. well because you are obviously an online personal trainer and you were trying to juggle quite a lot of different things you had the PT and you had Curry's you had everything else going on so at what point then did you then say Curry's enough is enough I, I want to go and do this full time because it's a big risk to take yeah, yeah. obviously you know exactly um, and that was the thing like I wanted to, that was like a big motivator and kind of driver of I hate this place it's so draining because Curry's on a weekend sound because it was busy so you were always doing something the shift went in relatively quick but because I wasn't in school and I didn't really have any kind of structure to it sometimes I'd be in twice during the week and see you in a, a, a midday week there was no one there you weren't really allowed to like lean on anything so you just had to like stand up right with like no nothing for eight hours and especially seeing prep like as your food comes down and as you get leaner and that's the thing like as your body fat gets lower like you just have less and less energy so see I would usually work in curries on my rest days so a Thursday and a Sunday I went down to 16 hours throughout prep because I was like I don't want to do any more than that um, I went on to Thursdays and Sundays and it meant that I actually came out of my rest days more mentally fatigued than my training days because I sat there for 8 hours literally just thinking I feel like shit and I'm so hungry and I had nothing to keep my mind occupied and that's again such an important thing with the routine it's like keeping yourself busy keeping yourself constantly with something to be doing because if not you're just thinking you finish that meal and you're like I want my next one yeah. I want my next one and you know what that feels like it's mm -hmm. horrible so it's it got to a point where I was like right I really need to get out here but obviously I wasn't in the position to do so when I had like five clients and at that point charging 80 pounds per month 400 pound a month Curry's doing 16 hours a week you're looking at like kind of 10 quid an hour so what what does that work out as you're asking the wrong guy yeah, <laughs> been to, i've done mask like yeah like closer than you yeah, yeah, yeah. Years for you. Um, <laughs> i never say, attended say, mass say, <laughs> like, say like 600 a month so it was like i was not going to be able to live off a of 400 realistic i could live off 400 pound one because i stay with my mom and dad and everything but i was like yeah i don't want to be doing that especially um with like paying finn and knowing that i've got bodybuilding shows coming up in the year and they're expensive me like traveling down the accommodation for them paying for the time paying for everything i was like i'm really not in a position to do this so i set myself that I would have 20 paying clients 
and that's when I would leave Curry's. So I think I hit that obviously after February or February time when I went down to see Finn and that that's when I really started to turn around and really like bash the content, bash everything and try and grow my business as much as possible, put a lot of effort into that. I think by kind of June time, that's when I'd hit my 20 clients. But there was that imposter syndrome of I don't know if I'm in a position to do this yet or is everyone going to leave me? What if something happens? I was like, I don't know when I'm going to be leaving here. And I was like, it's just like so comfortable to see the fact that knowing that I was getting like an extra 600 quid a month, I was like, ah, that's so nice. It's like I'm either making a grand and a half or I'm making two grand plus. I'm like, yeah, I want to keep that, I want to keep that. But then it got to the point where it was literally just so draining. Like I would go into that training day after the rest and just be like, ugh. So it's disgusting. Like I just felt so brain fog, so like mentally just gubbed after like that brain fog in general. So I was like, right, I need to get out here. So I think I ended up getting to 25, 30 clients and I messaged Finn. I was like, what do you think? I was like, I kind of want to do it, but I don't know. And he was like, mate, go for it. It was like, realistically, it's addition by subtraction. It was like, you're going to have more free time to yourself. You're going to be able to chill out more on rest days. You're going to be able to do all your client setups on rest days instead of trying to fit it in on your training days. You're going to have more time to put content out. You're going to have more time to edit content. So it's like, why not do it? Because realistically, in a couple of months time, that's going to pay off because you've got more time to actually invest into that. So it was like, and that ended up happening. So um, that's when I decided, yeah, I would rather not because see, mate, see if I was encouraged right now yeah. on my rest days. Oh my God. Yeah. <laughs> this like, all see, yeah, like when when you are stage lean, obviously we'll probably talk about this. It's horrific. Mm-hmm. It's like you have no energy. You're constantly, it's not that you're constantly moody, but you could very easily be constantly moody. You need to look at it as you get the opportunity to do this. No one's forcing you to do it. It's like be appreciative of the fact that you're actually like you have the opportunity to do this process and, and go through it because see if you don't and if you like try and make it oh I can't be bored I can't be bored doing this oh I feel like shit and if you think about that and you let that be your kind of perspective and outlook on it like you will be miserable so it's trying to make sure that you you look at it in a little more kind of like positive and better outlook but like see Curry's made that so much harder mm-hmm. because it was just like you felt like shit and yeah. you had no energy through the shift so yeah 100% it's, I've said that a few times on the podcast now it is brutal waking up every day and knowing that you're, you need to go in and do something for like eight hour shifts yeah. or whatever and it's just yeah. mind numbing it's draining you also don't feel good because you're in the gym and stuff like that as well but yeah mate like it is a risk obviously leaving and, and you were kind of having in hand about it and you touched on that imposter syndrome as well if oh, what if some people you know leave me and I drop a wee bit of money but that was something that I used to be really guilty for I used to think oh a few clients are dropping down I used to be yeah. stress and panic and yeah but what you need to realise, and obviously what Finn told you as well, I like, I like the sound of Finn. He sounds like, yeah, a, yeah he sounds very knowledgeable because I was literally just about to say yeah. that. Yeah, you're dropping the money and curries, but what are you gaining from that experience? You're gaining valuable time that you wouldn't have had before. So you can then put even more effort and, and exactly. consistency into your business and into growing that as well. And bro, it's 100% paid off, man. It's 100% yeah. paid off. And it's good to see, man, that your, your business is flourishing. And okay. it's only going to get better and better from here, mate. It's going to absolutely skyrocket. I've got no doubt about it. So let, let, let's talk about the bodybuilding shows and I want to get on to them. Now, okay. I want you to describe what bodybuilding actually is to people, all right, to the muggles yeah, out there. It's like a child. Yeah, a child. yeah, pretty much. Because I think I think with bodybuilding, a lot of people and definitely maybe you know the older people I don't mean that condescendingly by the way if there's any 40 year olds watching that I just mean older than us obviously yeah dads. yeah but even I'll use my mum and dad as an example they would not understand it whatsoever yeah, they would think that you know it's just you prancing about in stage in your pants or whatever right but there is so much more to it than that yeah, yeah. and that's what I want you to, to dive deeper into yeah even like the people that will see like sebum or something they'll think like oh everyone should be looking like that and that's the the goal and um like the the reality of it as well is unnatural like you, you obviously have assisted bodybuilding or not obviously to a lot of people but that's what mum and dad were saying as well because i was like yeah i'm going to be competing in natural shows and they were like what do you mean natural shows i was like well the the kind of norm for bodybuilding is for it to be like non-tested because a lot of it is steroids and this sounds really bad and i don't want to be offensive with this but name me your top three footballers in the world right now um me, give me, me three footballers in the world right now, even that. Messi, Ronaldo, Haaland. Name me three female footballers right now. I don't know. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, that is know. the difference. Yeah. And again, I don't want that to be like yeah, sexist yeah. or whatever. I don't want to get like cancelled for that. <laughs> but that is the difference between 
assisted bodybuilding or what some people might think is like normal standard bodybuilding shows and natural bodybuilding like there's usually not as much kind of around that like say the olympia for for example like the winner of that wins four hundred thousand pounds whereas in natural olympia it'll be like four thousand pounds so not a lot of people understand that you get natural federations and you get your untested federations which is where like the ifbb pro the mr olympia the sebum the um like all those kind of more popular people are your Ronnie Coleman, your Arnold, stuff like that. But natural bodybuilding obviously means that you don't use any steroids. So you've got no fat burners, no nothing like that. So it's never going to be as freaky as your kind of unassisted bodybuilding. It doesn't mean that you can't get stupidly good physiques because some of the people that I've came up against your league that guy's on a shitload of steroids, but realistically he's natural. It's like the levels that you can take that to people don't understand. It's like, it's crazy. But pretty much with bodybuilding shows, you have different categories throughout the day. And they're usually on a Saturday or a Sunday, bodybuilding shows themselves. And you've got like different categories. So for myself, I'm teen bodybuilding. So that's under 20 year olds. So you've got teen bodybuilding, you've got junior bodybuilding, which is under 23s. Then you've got the men's categories. So there's like no age restrictions to that at all. You've got the short, the medium, the tall, or you've got the lightweight, the, the middleweight, and then the heavyweights. Um, there's loads of different ways that they split it up. You've then got classic physique. So for the people that are listening that might know like C-Bum, etc that's sebum and um, that's when you're kind of looking for those more kind of classic lines to look like arnold etc then you've got your masters bodybuilders which are going to be your much older ones mate there is over 80s on I'm one sorry, of the shows yeah, yeah scary like yeah. goes to like a most much like, oh, <laughs> go man like, go the heroes probably look quite better than mate, me right honestly, now <laughs> it's ridiculous um, but like there's loads of different loads of different categories throughout the day so Pretty much, they'll select a winner for each category. They'll select, like, say, a top three. There's usually, it depends on the class because teens, there's obviously not a lot of teens that are going to be taking fitness that seriously. So there's, like, usually less teens, or there has been in the past. But this season's been really big for teenage bodybuilding. Like, in a lot of the shows that I've done, one of them, there was 13 teens in my class when it's usually, like, last year, there was, like, four or five. So it's became a lot more popular, and that's probably due to, like, the kind of, tiktok and instagram like the whole thing around it competing is becoming a lot more popular nowadays um but that also brings with it like sometimes a lower standard because people think oh yeah i'll just go and compete in a bodybuilding show i'll diet for eight weeks or diet for 12 weeks or even 16 weeks mm. and it's like oh yeah i'll be ready but they will not be ready like stage condition compared to like influencer lean condition it's a complete different ball game like eight weeks into my prep people were like bro could compete right now like he would go win these shows and I'm like mate I would look so fat on stage right now it took me 20 weeks probably to get into stage condition and that's pretty early because again I get into stage condition really easily or, or get lean easily just the way to my, my body's kind of set up the the genetic kind of set point of that of being the skinnier kid but like it's a complete different ball game people don't understand how much it does gub you but Pretty much to get back to the actual shows themselves, you, they select a winner from each class throughout the day. At the end of the day, you go into the overall. So each winner from each class goes into the overall and you all compete like to, to see who's the best of the best, pretty much. So that takes the win for the whole show. So say I'm two times British champion, that doesn't mean that I won the whole show two times. I did end up doing that. Really. So, um, <laughs> had to, had to. Yeah, um, you got it too but, <laughs> Like, I'm two times teen British champ. So, like, my class. And then you go in for the overalls. But, again, a teen shouldn't even be kind of in discussion for that because, realistically, with bodybuilding, the more muscle that you hold the easier you can get into condition simply because the muscle is going to be more prominent against the skin so it's easier to get that fat around it away and, and for you to look proper skinless so teens never usually again in the past like in recent years like you never really see like a really teen a uh, really conditioned teen that's holding a lot of muscle etc because they've not been training for long enough they don't have that muscle maturity in general that a kind of comp competitor should have sorry but this year like there's been a lot of teens that have been really really good and like bringing a lot of condition even with last year as well there was a couple of good guys that were like top three consistently throughout each show and it's kind of up that level of team bodybuilding but I went way off track. Uh, you That's can, cool, you can bro. ask your next question. You're just bro, talking about <laughs> chatting about bodybuilding. Yeah, bro, waffling, it's completely... away. Bro, this is uh, mi casa, es tu casa. So it is. <laughs> I can't speak any Spanish, I understand that. My house is your house. Mate, I got an A in natural, uh, oh, in you, yeah? Spanish, sorry, um, but couldn't do any of it. The reason, reason that I'd done it, the actual written exam, I got a D in, so uh, I pretty much failed that. 
and then they were like, right, it wasn't fair because it was your prelim, you didn't do anything for it. She was like, go home and do these two past papers and if you do well in them, I'll give you a better grade. And realistically, it's a past paper, so people don't know, like, you've got the questions there and you can go onto the SQA website, <laughs> find the answers. <laughs> so I just answered them all right, got 30 out of 30 on both of them, got the um, speaking, like the, the speaking exam itself, had absolutely no clue what any of it meant, just memorised it like word by word. So I was just spouting out words that had no clue what they meant, but they just, I knew what questions they were going to ask me. So I just written them off, got them complete memory, and I used it. Did you get an A, yeah? Yeah, yeah. I was, I, was, I don't know any Spanish. I was getting excited there. I thought we were about to have a conversation in nah. Spanish there, bro. You Awful, know, but... <laughs> So in terms, in terms of the, the bodybuilding shows, I just want to clear something up as well. Josh Campbell is a hundred percent natural, right? Because people, if you go on Josh's Instagram or TikTok or anything and look at the videos of him posing, right? All the uh, not all the comments, but there's a lot of comments oh, yeah. on there that people do not think you're natural, right? And obviously that is a compliment because you look that yeah, crazy. People, I don't people take it as like a insult. I'm like, it's yeah, that, a it's such a comment. Com it's such a comment. I wish I got people commenting like, this, bro, this guy's not natty. Yeah, like, come on, <laughs> no, he's a hundred percent that. Yeah, <laughs> but you you are a hundred percent natural. You've never touched steroids in your life because even the now people probably don't even see like the t-shirt you're wearing. People probably don't yeah, actually appreciate the yeah, shape that you're in. You this guy is in nut shape, right? Thank crazy you. shape. And a lot of his comments are basically just people not believing him pretty much because he's in that crazy shape. So, but yeah, you've already kind of touched on that. You just see that as like a compliment pretty much, yeah. Yeah, like a lot of people will get pure offended by it. And even like my dad's like, you can't let them say that. And they're like, that's taken away from your hard work. I'm like, yeah, but I don't really mind. Like it's some like 14 year old from, from I don't know, like Iran or something. <laughs> no, that's no, like, no. Why would I take offense to that? Why would I let that get to me? Um, but again, it's like, just look at it in a kind of positive manner. And that's the thing, like talking about like in general, like in prep, I could look at it as like, oh, it's so rough and everything and have a shit outlook on it. It's the same thing with that. It could be like, oh, everyone's trying to discredit me from my work and please, please look at me like I'm actually natural. Or just be like, Haha, that's pretty cool. Yeah, that's funny, like, yeah. I'm not going to take any offence to that. The people that are actually knowledgeable about natural bodybuilding will know that I am natural. But, like, get some half-decent lighting, get yourself posing, get a good little trend in TikTok audio on it, get a lot of views, and everyone will just start arguing about it. One person says he's not natural, one person says he is. Everyone starts debating about it, goes on to the algorithm, and it just continues to, like, tumbleweed for there, and you get more and more and more of it. So... I don't really let it get to me that much. I don't really mind it at all, to be honest. Um, but like with like the social media growth, like it's weird because I try and have like a balance of it all. So like putting out those reels and getting like all the kind of engagement from that, but then still putting out like that good content. And you need the kind of balance of both of them. But it means that a lot of my followers, followers just now are or like the new ones are just like pure foreign TikTok kids, and it's like you need to kind of be how be able to have that balance of still interactive like engaging followers and then also like the ones that just gets you like loads of loads of views and stuff with those videos but yeah i don't don't mind it Doesn't yeah you've, you've got you got you've got like a formula though and it's working and and, yeah, yeah. and i like that as well you're mate you're, you're so incredibly switched on like and i, I do mean that 100 yeah. percent because even what you said there about the content a lot of people maybe would have seen you know like a video doing doing well views wise and then just kind of basically do that the whole yeah. time but then you might not getting as taken as seriously as yeah, like an exactly. actual coach because you they might just think oh he's chasing for clout or whatever and but you're not you're always thinking right okay yes that's doing well but i still also need to be providing educational yeah, exactly. content and getting content that is going to essentially get me clients yeah exactly right. and that's the thing like one of the things that brought me to finn as well was like his training intensity and how accurate he was and how much of a high standard he held himself to so i'll always do that as well like put out my training to show like right i'm still in prep right now but here's my training and it's like not spotless i'm not going to say that it's perfect but like i go into every single session and it's the flip of switch as soon as i get into that gym i'm applying myself the standard stays the same and i could again I'm, at the moment i'm doing two to three posts a day because while i'm in prep like while i'm lean like this and i have a lot more attention on me on social media like i'm trying to make the most of it because i'm not always going to be this lean i'm not going to have that same amount of kind of clout on social media but i could 
realistically there's like three posts a day where it's just me posing in that pro life bathroom with a good lighting and just showing my tricep and giving it that and showing my, my vascularity but like that's going to bring me nothing pretty much except from followers but what good is that it's like i don't want that i want to still have a good community i want to have people that look up to me in terms of like right he is on the ball with everything with the training with all that and i want people to follow me to still get value it's like if you're just seeing the same thing over and over and over again and, and it's just literally physique updates to me you're not going to get anything from that from following me you're just not going to end up getting sick of me and that's it yeah so it's still trying to right now like cause i'm like in the run-up to shows there's obviously a lot of it is based around my physique but like the first post i'll do in the morning will be my check-in photos so like i'll take my check-in photos send them over to Finn, get the update etc and get the plan for the day so i'm checking in with them like a lot of coaches and like the kind of standard procedure is just to check in once a week but for me right now with the shows and making these daily manipulations etc and making sure that i'm on the money it's a case of checking in every single morning so i'll post that first thing in the morning um along with like an update to get people to be able to follow along with the journey because i prep's quite an interesting thing like when other people prep i follow along with it i'm like oh it's sick to see like all the differences etc so i post that put the context up with that second post of the day will be after a train i'll put my training clips and i'll put like a wee physique update after it from like my post workout shots then the last one that'll be when i get my get my tricep out or something and that'll be like the one where i'm trying to get that kind of more engagement and all the views and get like a couple million views onto like a reel or something because that's going to bring in those extra followers but still again providing value still providing education and everything to the people that follow me and then my stories as well like trying to kind of show personality etc as i was saying before it's like i'll put up and repost all the stuff that my clients put up for me and like i'll put them up and i'll have a laugh with them um and just kind of put like stuff about my day etc as well so still trying to provide like a reason to follow me pretty yeah much. and your 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 social media growth has been insane mate it's honestly been crazy but obviously with everything that you've just said there it's not because of work it, exactly, and it's because it. you've got like a structured plan behind it and you're you're consistently working hard at it i've actually spoke about content creation on here before and i think like maybe a lot of people that don't really make content or videos maybe just look in and think oh he's gonna easily post like a couple yes, of times and, yes. but it's hard man and it's exactly. like the pressures of having to post like every single day and staying on top of that at certain exactly. times and you know why am i posting this and then i can't post this thing because what did they posted yeah, too much is it is it's a lot clashes that, with each other yeah you yeah get two posts that are just like the same back to back and then you're like oh it doesn't look really nice on the grid that yeah, yeah. it's like trying to split it all up and it is tough like people think as well that online coaching is an easy job like mm. see if you're a busy online coach i can guarantee that you're going to be busier and more stressed or could be more stressed than people that work a normal job oh, it's like yeah. you don't get any time to yourself yeah 100%. like if you go off your phone for an hour you'll come back and you've got like 10 15 messages from clients and you've got training clips to go over and you've got this to do and then you've got an inquiry through that you need to get back to and you're like i just want to chill out yeah it's and crazy it's like, man it people is. don't realize it's like oh it's easy money bro it's like it's just gonna it's a it's a nice easy job where you're just gonna get loads of money in and it's just always flowing but it's, it's not like that and if you take a step away from content and like you're like all right i'm just gonna actually focus on solely just like the clients just now i'm gonna take away a step a step away from content then like clients are obviously going to drop off like naturally just due to like say family issues and stuff going on financial issues if you're not constantly pushing that coaching along with that as well while looking after your clients then you're going to drop clients and not take any more in so you need to be always on top of everything and it can get very stressful and that's what i was saying this to, to adam in the car it was like only a couple of days ago i actually realized the position that i'm in because at february or, or even when finn sent over that starter video see when he said to me right i want you to chase down a british title you've got the potential for it i put the laptop down i ran through it to my mum and dad i was running about the living room like oh oh my god he, he says that i might be getting a british title and at that point i dreamed of having say like 30 40 50 clients and it was like right that is everything that i'm going to be working towards and I'm kind of in that position right now like i've won my british titles i've got the i've surpassed the clients that i thought i was ever going to have but i never really actually took it and thought oh that's fucking like, like, yeah, i'm proud of class. myself like that that's brilliant like i've achieved what i wanted to achieve because you're always so busy like as you grow and as you start taking in more clients you don't realize it at the time but like you're just getting busier and busier and busier and you live like 
check-in to check-in. You live post to post, like on Instagram. It's like task by task by task by task per day. You're literally living like by the five minutes. So you get the day meticulously planned out. Like especially with prep, like you want to be as kind of meticulous and as everything spot on as you can, like time efficiency wise to get everything done to try and minimize your stress. But then you never have time to enjoy yourself. You never have time to relax. You don't give as much time to the people that you want to give. Like my mum and my dad, like and my, my, my family and Casey, like my girlfriend, like it's just like I wasn't spending enough time with them because I was so overly focused on trying to be spot on with everything, trying to get like five minute replies to absolutely everyone. It's like I'm not an emergency service. It's like a, a coach can take a couple hours to get back to you sometimes because it's unfair on them. If they're working, like if I get up at six in the morning, which I do, and then go to bed at say half nine at night, it's not fair on me to work every single minute of the day. It's like people work nine to five, whereas we need to work six to nine. Yeah, it's yeah. Like you don't get a, a minute off and it's not like, yep, take the weekend off as well. It's like people are still sending to a training clips. You still have check-ins to do. Fair enough, yeah, you might put your check-ins on to like the kind of weekdays, etc. and most people do, but like you still need to stay on top of that and all the stuff that you're planning out for future ventures in terms of like business plans, podcasts, um, certain kind of like packages that you're bringing out, etc. Like it's very hard to actually take dedicated time off and yeah, it's, it's, it's rough, isn't it? It's it, is, like, it is quite hard. Like I think like, you, you hit the nail on the head. I think a lot of people see being an online PT and think, oh, he's sitting his laptop doing a wee few minute check in or whatever and making all this money but there's there's so much more that goes on to it and like you said uh, yeah you've got the the PT inside of things but in content creation now is essentially part of our jobs that is how you get business so you've got the pressures of doing that 24 7 and that, that was interesting what you said about not taking time off because that's actually what led to me having like a complete burnout kind of yeah, episode yeah. as well and that was when I don't know if you remember I went to Tenerife myself for like a week yeah, but yeah. I was like ah, I need to fuck off and just get away from here a wee bit and just have like some days where I'm Some not even going in my reset. phone yeah, yeah, yeah like at all because like you said most people might work a 95 and stuff but we are pretty much 24 7 replying to messages and even at that like they'll get like annual leave or something mm-hmm. where they get yeah, like a set yeah. amount of time to take off we don't get that and you feel like, you almost feel guilty for like it's taking exactly some time what off I was about and all to say. and it was it, like you get so anxious and think fuck what are they going to think of me is some of my clients going to drop me or like am I holding myself to the standard that I want to be holding myself to but then when you do think about it and you take a step back you're like no it does have time why? Off. yeah exactly yeah, yeah. exactly but, but it is, it's a proper mind fuck exactly what you just said there you know it could be like about a year and you've not taken like an actual day's holiday where you've not yeah. replied to anybody or done anything at all and then you're then taking that time to the sides but then you then start to doubt yourself you're thinking oh shit everybody's going to drop off and am I a shit coach because I'm doing this and it's like no you're just a normal human being and that, that's what I want to say to you not to give you advice or anything because you're smashing it but yeah. making sure that you are taking that that time off and Definitely. taking time with loved ones with your girlfriend spending time with your family because when you're in that constant loop of when your business is picking up and you're just like you said living from check in to check in and thinking right okay what's next what's next what's next it can proper, you know, everything can just build up inside Mate, you. And in front of you, it was just like sometimes, like I wake up in the morning, I'm just like, fucking hell, man! It's like I've just got so much work to do, I've yeah. got so much stuff to get through, and like, see if you like try and have like a relaxed day, you end up realizing how much that you've got, and then that stresses you out even more mm-hmm. because you're not in that proper routine as well. So it's like it's tough to actually be able to handle that well to not get yourself stressed out and I think this when I go to Romania in a couple of days time this will be the first like day off I've had in say nine months because um, even when I've been going to like these shows recently I, I say into my group chat into my whatsapp group chat like I'm going to be taking a step away from this like not a full step away like I'm still replying to messages I'm still doing kind of training feedback here and there just maybe missing out some of the bigger like longer ones that I've got um, and like not doing the check-ins just until the Monday when I get back but like see if people still send over all their sessions throughout that weekend say I've got like around the 40 kind of client mark and if they all send their sessions say half of them do it it's like there's seven clips from each session there's 140 clips from those 20 people if that's if I'm away from Friday Saturday Sunday Monday say that's two sessions across the weekend it's like 240 like videos that I need to watch and then getting back to that on the Monday along with having to do the check-ins as well it's like I know that right I'm enjoying this time kind of taking a slight step back on the weekend itself but see the anxiety going into the Monday oh, it's horrible. knowing that how much work you actually yeah, have it's, horrible, man. it's like 
holy shit because it all just builds up like if you're not on the ball constantly like with your reply times with your everything with your form feedback it just builds up to the next day and yeah. then it makes the next day worse and you're constantly dreading the next day thinking i've got so much to do here but then on the night as well like that night before you're like i kind of want to chill so then you chill but then it makes the next day worse or then you actually do the work and then you're like oh, i will never actually get time to chill out and it's like you never know what one to pick. Oh, it's and a mindfuck, it's like, bro. Yeah, it is pretty it is. rough, and it? it's like people don't really realise. And again, they think it is just that easy income of all. Oh, it's pretty simple, but no, it is, it's a, it is a mindfuck, man. And I want to touch on the, the imposter syndrome because that's something that you've actually kind of uh, touched on a couple of times, and it, it's something that I kind of struggle with as well. We were saying on the way up to the podcast, like that Anton was obviously I can speak about that because the podcast has been released, yeah, but yeah. Anton was in last week, and I remember like thanking him so much for for sharing a story that was coming here. I was like, oh, thanks so much, and he's like, bro, it's your podcast, yeah, exactly. like of course I'm going to, but I'm just like I feel like I've given right, yeah, like yeah, to exactly. be here. And obviously with your growth as well, so you were posting on social media. You stopped kind of posting for a wee bit and then you went back to it, but on TikTok, what, your followers and they are doubled to like over 40k now, is that right? Yeah, I think so. I think it's 43k, but again, that's just like one or two videos. That yeah, yeah. Up. Like I posted a video on my tricep. I know, I get millions of views. I mean, it was half six in the morning. I'd just done my check-in. I was about to put my top back on. Looked at myself and I was like, oh, that's pretty cool. <laughs> Recorded it, put it on my Instagram story. A couple of people swiped up and like, mate, that was mad. I was like, all right, I'll check on TikTok and see what happens. It ended up getting like 5 million views. It's crazy, bro. And that, that took my followers from 19,000 to 35,000. Yeah, One video on my tricep. But again, like my inquiry form for coaching, like nigh on doubled. Like I got like, after that video, I think I must have got like 60 coaching inquiries, like off the back of like my TikTok and my Instagram blown up from that. But five of them, 10 of them maybe were actual like, real people yeah, it was yeah. all just like little tiktok kids and stuff but that's the thing like don't always chase those just high view videos because it's not going to give you much in return like i think tiktok pays you if you do like the like one minute or long videos fair enough if it's a one minute long video and you get five million views and it fucking quids yeah, in but <laughs> like if it's a video like that that's short and it's not getting me much and like even after that like my views for the next couple of days on all other videos were brilliant but like a week after once it died down once i stopped getting views from that video back to normal so yeah. it's like you need to try and balance it don't you you do yeah and then your instagram as well is honestly gone crazy i feel like every yeah. time i check your instagram it's like i'm sure you because this is a separate instagram page you made when you first started pt wasn't it yeah, yeah. and you were at maybe like what a thousand followers for a good while yeah and now you're what 19k now 19K. yeah but so, that's happened like i, yeah, I swear i checked quickly. last week and you were at 15k maybe yeah, I'll and i check. checked today and it was like 19 i'm like uh, that this is insane morning so I think I was, yeah, I was 18.6, like, before I went to bed last night, and I'm 18.8 just now, Class, so, like, bro. 200. But, again, that would just be because if I go into, like, my reels, like, one of them will have done decent. Yeah, like, so, in my reels, I've got five that are sitting around 20K, and then the one below that is 1.3 million. That's crazy, So, like, bro. it'll just be off the back of that one where that's just got loads and loads of views and that'll be getting me loads of followers for that so but that is but that is down to you though it's not down to luck that these are getting that it's because you're in fucking crazy shape but it's you that's put the graft in and it's worked hard for it as well and what do you ever my question is to you do you ever think about like the future and think about you know the amount of followers and that that you're going to be on because i look at you and i'm like mate you're going to be on like hundreds if not millions of followers in the future and you're going to be massive mate yeah. and do you do you know that about yourself or do you deep it or nah um like it is weird because i was saying this to you in the car as well like I would look at Finn and he's got like 14,000 followers when I was on a thousand and I was like, how the fuck did he get there? For him, realistically, that's just been like six years of literally just consistently putting out content. Whereas for me, like it's all just happened in an instant because of like the, the reels and stuff. But I was like, that's so far out of my reach, that like 14, 15,000 followers, that's going to take me years and years and years to get there. And now I'm past that and I'm like, yeah, that's what it is, and that's what I'm saying about like the kind of like trying to appreciate things for what they are when stuff like this happens to you. It's like hard to actually take it in because with everything going on, you're just like, all right, brilliant. And a couple hundred followers, you like that in the morning, brilliant. Yeah, but yeah. then it's just like sound as what it is, and it's the same. That this sounds really bad, and this sounds like dead arrogant and cocky and horrible. But like with those shows, like see when I won them all, and like when I won each show, I was like. Yeah. That's what it is. And that, that sounds so bad because like it takes away from like what it actually was and it takes away from the other people that were competing, etc. But I was just like 
because it was always looking at the next show and always just being like absolutely dialed in and thinking, right, what do I need to, to get from this? I need to do this next. I need to do this. Right. I need to get back home, do these check-ins. I need to get back to everything else and, and keep on top of these posts. Like see the fact that I was writing like five days out, four days out, three days out, two days out on Instagram. It was just like constantly, I was just like living in the Instagram post and not actually soaking it in, in the moment and appreciating it for what it is. And that's what I kind of realised the other day. I was like, Jesus, I actually need to take a step back. And when I'm in these moments, and like for that last show there, like I kind of did take a, a bigger step back from working a bit into the group chat. I was like, right, please only send like your big hitters from the session. So if you've got like seven exercises, if it's say a, a pool workout, please just send over like the, the RDL or the deadlift or like one of their movements. I was like, because I, I really want to try and like really appreciate it for this weekend and, and for what it is. Because I went down with my mum and dad um, and just enjoyed some time with them. So it's like really trying to appreciate it. And I've said it like multiple times already in the podcast. It feels like I'm getting dead repetitive with it, but it is so important like in moments like this to try and appreciate it. And you're saying there like, I'm, I'm going to like be even more like popular on social media, etc. But like, I don't realise it because like it's always just like trying to right there's the next one there's the next one that's the next goal like just these little things and not really realizing the position that you're in so we'll see how it goes but i just need to continuously but that's the thing like i'm not always going to be stage lean so i'm thinking right is my following not going to go up then because i'm not posting these freaky like like these videos with me and my tricep out and stuff like that so it's like trying to think about how to still capitalize on all this stuff and still grow when i've not got that kind of little like trump card of like my no. my leanness and stuff like that but i still we'll don't see. think i still don't think a growth is just down to those like videos yeah, so i definitely exactly. I don't think it is and even people now you, you've got to understand now that you built a fallen now that people are invested in you and the people that follow you are and that's just going to continue to grow even if you're you're not as lean you're still going to be lean probably yeah, yeah. but you're just going to get bigger and people are going to follow along in and that that's journey the thing, as like, well it probably means it'll get more quality followers too yeah because it's actually people that are like interested in me and not just like oh nice tricep i'm going to click yeah, following yeah. that yeah for sure. like, you you'll get more from it um but yeah it's a it's a weird one it's strange to think about it's strange to think about but i think it is so important to like you said to highlight actually reflecting back on everything that you've achieved and, and taking yeah. a step back to appreciate it because it's something that I've been so guilty of and I've spoke about it so many times but I think when you're you're in that kind of living in the moment and you're constantly thinking of what's next what's next what's next you never actually take a second to realize that you've achieved something so you're never yeah. actual f you're never you're never fulfilled at all because you reach a goal that you'd set out yourself maybe months ago that you achieved yeah, but then you just think, oh. like you're never satisfied no you're not like you're not. not exactly and it's like we were speaking about this in the car like it's so mad to see both of us here right now and again not to sound pure cocky and arrogant but like we're in a good position right yeah, now yeah. like we realize it but when we think back to two years ago so i train at pro life gym that is where adam used to be out. out of i know <laughs> the boys um that's where adam used to work in general while you were doing like your kind of pt qualification and i remember going in and that was when i was like just out, just out of lockdown say what kind of 2020 september november is time etc and i would go in and i would do my session and adam would be there because i would train later at night after school after curries adam would be sweeping the floor Mental. like sitting cleaning up or cleaning the machines and like we would just sit and chat and it was like all right well how how's things how's training going ah good mate what are you thinking of doing and like just sitting but we were both not in a shit position like it obviously wasn't bad but like to think about how far we've come in since then it is yeah. it's wild isn't yeah, it like it's, it's mental when you actually do think about it because both of us back then i'm sure like we would have been like nah that's not no chance like, that. <laughs> absolutely no chance of that. that that's surreal like, ridiculous but now that we're in that moment it's like oh huh. but you need to realize like fucking hell you need to realize like how excited you were for that and how you need to appreciate it more it's like exactly life will just pass you by and life will just feel yeah. like a blur a, a wee bit because you've done so much like i said in such a short amount of time and you're not deflecting on that now let's actually talk about the bodybuilding shows because we've not even really yeah, spoke about we, it on we, that we, we, we just, so i know we've really just went a mad tangent but as like it is it will be a good podcast for people to like actually appreciate yeah like, yeah what, where they are though and like and just actually try and because that's another thing that i try and like just instill in my clients like to appreciate the process itself not look at the gym or doing steps as like a chore that you need to do it's like an opportunity for you to be better it's an opportunity for you to get into a position that you really want to be in and then again you can take a step back and realize 
right, brilliant. Yeah. Like, I'm where I want to be. Because, like, weekly check-in photos, you're thinking, oh, I've not changed that much. But then I'm like, right, go look at your check-in photos 12 weeks ago. Yeah. And it's like, holy yeah, shit. Holy yeah, you changed so much. So it's like getting people to actually realise how far they've came, whether that be physically or mentally or whatever it is, and trying to improve upon that and kind of take it, not take it for granted and appreciate it where it is. But bodybuilding, yeah, go for, for it. Sure. Go for it. And, uh, now, so in, in terms of the bodybuilding shows, so the first one, what, what when was the first one? So first one was July 16th. That was the WMBF first timers slash novice show. So that was, we didn't plan on doing that one. The first planned show was the BMBF qualifier, which was August 26th. So that's what, five, six weeks later. So we went into the WMBF show literally just for like, to kind of drop the nerves for the what, first practice, show. practice, essentially? Yeah, 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 literally. Yeah. It was like a, a practice kind of like warm-up show. I know a lot of people, there's like a lot of controversy around that, calling it a warm-up show because people then say like, all right, that's you. If you won that, like you're taken away from the people that that may be their main show. So I do understand that, but it literally was a warm-up show in terms of like, warming me up to the process and kind of like just getting a feel for competing because it's a very nerve-wracking thing when you think about it like talk, talk about talk about the process then of actual competing so what you, you go on stage but talk about what, what do you do before and then when you're so actually like on stage diet wise or like just just like yeah like when you, you arrive in the kind of arena or stadium wherever it is right, okay yeah so travel down um then on the day you get there, you register, get everything ready. So you go into this big building. It's usually like a proper, like full on, like auditorium arena place, um, where they usually hold like big, like plays and stuff like that. So there's like five hundred people in the audience. So like you go through and you kind of scout out like where you're going to be competing, etc. There's uh, you get registered first of all. So you get your number, you get your wee badge, you've got your uh, wee pants, your wee trunks that you've got with you. you attach that to it, um, and it's a case of trying to stay as stress free as possible so throughout the day like before you're going on like for the majority of time if you ever go to a bodybuilding show and if you're backstage you'll see everyone lying down with their feet elevated up the way so like they're they're lying down on the floor with like a bag or pillow behind their head and they've got their feet elevated up so they've got like less inflammation through their legs the more stressed that you are mentally like you you'll physically see it on your body you look watery you don't look as good so staying as stress free as possible so that's what i was trying to do on the day and that was what but again like that's the complete opposite of what you're meant to be feeling because you're about to go out on a stage in, in front of 500 people. First time you've ever done it, you've practiced, you've put 18 weeks of work into this, all for this moment, and someone's trying to tell you, yeah, be stress-free, yes. and just try and relax. It's complete opposite of what you would naturally feel. So um, for me, with the teenage bodybuilding class, that's usually on kind of first thing, that's like the first class that they start with. Um, so I would usually be on around kind of 10, 11 o'clock. That's when the, the classes would start. So for that show, that was all oh, the tannin as well. I forgot to mention that. So you usually get your base coat the night before. So that's like just the, the one layer and it depends the federation that you're competing in. You can either get like the kind of one that you actually apply yourself, which is a bit of a ball ache because you need to stand and get someone to do it for two hours. That was hilarious, man. See, for my second show, I'll go into this uh, like afterwards, but to mention it just now, that was the one where you had to do the self-applying one. So Noah came down with me, stayed with two guys from England, Will and Jasper, um, had never met them both before. And there I was, stood in the scud with a wee sock over my penis <laughs> and them just sitting tanning me and I was fully bent over because he had to tan my arms and I'm like just trying not to get a stone up honestly, <laughs> honestly I'm sat there um, and Jasper um, literally <laughs> met the boy about five minutes ago and I'm stood there in the scud yes. <laughs> getting tanned by him and Will Will's at like, Josh bend over and I'm like ah, what and he fucking grabbed my head bent me over and I was like Will stop that right now this is um, sounding mad sus mate, bro honestly, I can't lie <laughs> when you think about the sport it's so fucking yeah, weird yeah, like yeah. you're still up there with a little pair of pants on like 99% <laughs> naked with a hundred one hundred of men just judging that he, yeah. he looks good huh? he, he looks fucking, fucking solid doesn't <clears> he <throat> <laughs> fucking great um, but no like it's um for to get back to that show, like the tan wise, um, we done that one through Nicola. So she Nicola's A one tan. Shout out to her because she's the absolute goat. She does the tanning and that's like a spray tan. So we went to her the night before, with how it all worked out. Finn competed the day before, um, and then that was like dead far away. So we had to travel back up. Got to Nicola's at like ten o'clock at night. She tanned us there. And then the show was down in London, but we were in Loughborough, which is like still another like two hour drive away. So it was wake up at four in the morning, get over to 
Nicholas Sheetander's got the top coat on there, drove down, so it was like a very kind of busy, very early morning. And again, that's not ideal considering you want to get like a really good sleep, be relaxed and, and chill out. But you get your tan the night before, and then you get your base coat in the morning, so that's when you're like really dark and maybe you're really dark. Yeah. Like yeah. it's it's controversially dark. Yeah, it's like yeah. politically like you know, <laughs> that, that doesn't that doesn't look right. Like people people were like to me, mate, I, I'm glad that you're not doing politics because like <laughs> This is like they're getting cancelled for blackface. Yeah, yeah, like, for sure. It is pretty. You, it's like a very, very dark tan. So, but like, so what? So for people that don't know, what is the point in tanning for these body? Because that's yeah, it's yeah. probably something my, my parents is. Why are you wanting a bit yeah, of a daft tan and all that? Uh, yeah, if yeah. you see me. Sorry, if you see me like in person, you'd be like, "Oh my god, man, that's like ridiculous." It's like very very extreme but the reason behind that is because on stage the lights are so so bright like see AJ when he presented me with my trophy one of the photos it's like look at that ghost <laughs> like he looks like horrifically white because the stages are so bright like if you don't have that tan on you get completely washed out you won't be able to see any details in the physique you won't be able to see any kind of um, lines or any of the kind of condition that you work for because you'd just be so so light and a couple like again in the teenage class it's so inconsistent like you'll have like a 16 year old that like seen a bodybuilding show and they're like all right i'm gonna come i'm gonna gonna compete in four weeks time they don't know they don't realize that you need to get like a proper tan so like one of them will rock up and you're like looking at them and stage just like ah, poor boy man it's like he just looks so out of place because he was like completely white there's been like a few of them it always happens it's usually in the teenage class because they don't realize what they're getting into um but like i mean on one of them as well like the uh, woman came backstage because we were all sitting backstage she was like someone's back through here that shouldn't be back here because it was only athletes and she was like who is it she was like you and he was like no i'm competing but he had no tan on and i was just like could they look shit as well they, they ended up doing the tan for him because he would look like yeah. so out of place mm. because you really really do need that tan so tan the night before um and then you also get glazed it sounds like mate this is such a it's such a <laughs> is this when you have the sock, sock over your penis yeah, so. right, yeah literally so i've got tony the tiger yes. um, i don't know how the editing works for us or what but you might be able to get a photo of tony the tiger um, i don't know if i can put that on youtube yeah, mate, bro. It might be, it might be. basically josh has a tanning sock that he uses for his yeah. shows and, and it's not like a, a sock that goes on your foot yeah. that is a sock that goes over your penis um so like you usually get the wee the wee ankle socks for to put over um, so that you don't get a fucking tan bobby um, <laughs> and Nicola had a few ones some daft ones there was an alligator and there was a wee tiger I was like I'm taking the tiger then <laughs> called it Tony me and Noah got some photos the thing was like Noah was like right let me get a photo of you I was like ah oh, fucking brilliant get a photo of you. he was just going to send it to one of his mates and I was like uh, at Noah Campbell tied you on Instagram post and Instagram story was like oh, oh shit I was like right I'm just going to fully accept it now yeah, so yeah. I just, it was just a picture of me like that Arr, like, like, I can't remember really balling uh, naked no. with that over. I was like, this is shocking. But um, yeah, it's a it's a very strange, strange sport when you think of it. But yeah, um, Tony is what I use for all my shows. He'll be coming to Romania with me. He's he's the goat. Um, but yeah, back to the first show, Jesus. Um, <laughs> so get your tan done, get everything ready. You're chilling backstage, and then you go backstage. Like it's quite hard though because trying to time it all like you need to eat like your pre-stage meal like a certain amount of time before so that it's fully digested because if you eat that meal and you go on it's not digesting it's sitting in your stomach your midsection is going to look bloody if you do it too long before you're not going to be able to get a good pump so see trying to time all these things and the show might not be running completely in order they don't have like set times between each classes because they don't know like see if a class is a lot closer than they think it's going to be they'll need to take longer to to compare people or if it's like there's someone standing out it's going to take it's not going to take as long so it's like you need to try and figure out sorry like when your class is going to be on so it is quite stressful in that and again that all takes away from the fact that you're trying to be as stress-free as possible yeah and, so, and, and then that that but then that ties in also as well with does that not tie in with when you're backstage you're trying to get a pump before you go on and then that yeah, can mess up all it the time it's very very stressful and that's the thing if a show hasn't run well then your work is put to like nothing because and, and, uh, uh, yeah so all that time that you've spent months and months and months messed up by them not communicating right with you and not telling you when you're on because on one of the other shows i'm not going to name the federation because i don't want to like take shots at people and stuff but like they didn't communicate very well with like when you're going to be on and stuff the backstage room and the, the area where you're supposed to chill was so far away from everything that like there was very little communication with that and it meant I ended up going through and asking I was like right I'm in the teenage bodybuilding class um 
ideally going to eat an hour before I go on. Do you think I should eat like kind of just now? Because that was when I thought it was going to be like, ah, yeah, yeah, you'll be fine. Like that's probably going to be an hour. Sat down to the meal like three minutes later, five minutes later, somewhere literally just like got the meal out and started eating it. And then someone came running through going, where is Josh Campbell? You need to be on in 10, 15 minutes. I'm like, are you shitting me? Like I've literally just done all this and I'm in the middle of eating this meal. I've then had to pick up the meal, run through and like eating the meal while I'm like running through, digesting horribly because I'm so stressed out, so anxious, trying to get everything done. And then you need to go get that glaze done. Like you need to get the, the all done there. You need to get a pump. If you go on stage without a pump, you're gonna look very flat and trying to stay hydrated, trying to have like so you'll have like a pre workout shaker as well, or like a what you would call pre workout usually, but it's just like a pump product, like one that's solely focused for that. Have that and all these different things things to do is see if you're not on top of it and if you're not on time it'll ruin how you look completely so on that WNBF one that very first one that was run very well timed it all well got the the pump kind of it was new to me for everything so um it was a little bit different but everything went well with that went out for the teens class for that one you get different kinds of shows as well so you get ones that are like evening uh, so morning and evening shows so you go out and do like the comparison rounds where everyone gets compared to each other in a big lineup they make you do these mandatory poses and your muscularity poses where they compare you side by side and they choose the winner and then in the evening show you go back out but they don't choose the winner they don't tell you who it is so they'll say go away then you come back out for the evening show and then that's when they give you your rewards and stuff but this one was just a like basic kind of set show where it's not get like split or anything like that so ended up winning the teens class there and I was like ah, right brilliant because this is my warm up show so I didn't have any expectations like I wasn't fully fully conditioned yet so I was like right I'm coming in like kind of 75-80% here um, ended up winning that and then it was a case of chilling out for the overall so the overall was after at the very end obviously after everyone's competed so it was like so what, what, what is the overall to people listening? Yeah so overall is pretty much when every winner from each class goes against each other. Okay, so, so who's the best, pretty much? Yeah, yeah, pretty much. Like, who's the best of the best? But again, a team shouldn't be kind of in discussion for winning the overall because they're going to be the smallest because they've not got enough muscle... Uh, muscle? I was going to say muscularity and then muscle go between them. Yeah, yeah. Um, they've not got as much muscularity and then they can't get as lean because of that and they've not usually got as much shape and structure just because they don't have as much time in general, haven't been training for as long. So I went into that with, again, absolutely no expectations. I was like, no chance. You were in there with some huge guys as well. Mate, like there was a guy that must have been around kind of like 100 kg stage lean. He was like six foot four. I went onto his Instagram, seen him squat like 340 kilo, <laughs> seen him deadlift like 340 kilo yeah, plus. Mate, genuinely like huge. His name on Instagram was like Silverback Gorilla or something. <laughs> and I was like, mate, that is literally the most. I've given no chance, yeah, man. Mate, no chance at all because I seen him pumping up backstage and he was in the middle of the room and everyone was kind of pumping up and we were all just like. You know, just, just looking at him just like holy shit like just like we're all gubbed here because I remember the junior class winner as well was like right this is the words he said to me was like right we've won our class this is just like the DLC it was like we're just going to go have fun like we've, we've unlocked something that shouldn't really have been done right let's just go enjoy it so I was like right let's have it so went out like between my show and the overall I literally chilled out the whole day put my bag behind my head put my hoodie up put that over my face and slept for like a good like three hours or so like just like kind of in and out of consciousness just chilling out but that brought my physique to life a whole lot because I was less stressed out because my body was chilled um, and then I was like eating like small meals throughout the day so just like a protein and fat serving to keep me ticking over but nothing that's going to hold too much volume in my stomach then the pre-stage meal is when you're getting some carbohydrates and a lot of people think as well like there's this the kind of thought around bodybuilding that you need to dehydrate yourself and like not drink any water but realistically if you're not drinking any water the carbs aren't going to get put around your body you won't be able to get a pump because you're not hydrated enough so you're still drinking a bit of water then you're having your pre-stage meal which you're going to have more carbohydrates in because that's going to allow you to get a better pump and um, that's going to fill your muscles up a little bit more kind of intracellularly um but i went out there and ended up taking the overall ended up winning that against that big guy so that was like ridiculous that was out of this world because the teens class i was buzzing with because it was believable the overall like i still really haven't came to terms with it kind of did like when i done that reflection there but like i'd done it and i won it and i was like i can't believe that at all yeah it was like so ridiculous because like even when i posted it on tiktok and instagram and stuff everyone was like how did he win that because the guys next to me were huge mate like massive but like in bodybuilding size it's not everything like it's in a case of your structure your shape your physique in general your condition my condition was pretty strong um but then how you present yourself like you're posing as well so um like the guys like they looked a little bit more awkward hitting their shots etc i knew myself that i was the smallest on stage so i knew i had to make myself look bigger so it was like 
I kind of edge myself forward a teeny bit more in front. You're not really supposed to. But it was like subtly try to get myself a teeny bit in front of them. But then every pose as well, I made sure that I was the first into it. So see like a front double bicep, I made sure that my elbows were in front of his. Because if the two guys were in front of me and I was behind them, I would have just been overlooked. And like no one would have cared about me. So it was a case of present myself, make myself look as big as possible and play my conditioning cards. So like I knew my condition was good and my shape was good. So just try and show that off as best as I can. And they called my name and I shot myself. I was like <laughs> literally, oh my God. God. No way. Um, it was ridiculous. I, I couldn't believe it. So that was the warm up show. And into... that, that, that's what I want to say. So you basically went to this warm up show with pretty much no expectations. You didn't even think that you were maybe going to win the team thing. Yeah. Basically, just using it as a practice. And you went in and shot on everybody. You literally <laughs> won everything. And also, what is show? I'm going to go and grab this. <laughs> this is what you you get for winning an overall. So can we get it? This is what Mr. Mr. Campbell <laughs> won at his overall show. I don't know if that's Brilliant. in the shot. I'm gonna try and not smash the table. Let's see how many people get it. You got it. Oh. it is a massive sword. Yeah, so and for anybody just listening on Spotify, we've honestly get like a sword that could slay a dragon yeah, in it's front like of five foot tall. It's a proper sword because I was speaking to the guy that runs the show as well, and he was saying that these are the swords that they use in Game of Thrones. All oh, right, right, so, okay. Like, these the the ones that they actually use for the the show itself. Like it's proper full on. It's like metal as well. Yeah, it's heavy. Um, yeah, and I put it down on my bed sheets, like just to to kind of sit it there, and I ripped the fucking my bed sheets like multiple times <laughs> because like the end is pretty sharp as well. Like I can hold. This no, part. it is. Yeah, um, yeah, it's not like bad. Like I can put like pressure on my thumb with it, but oh, I could definitely um, kill somebody. Yeah, yeah, yeah I could take someone's head <laughs> yeah. off if I wanted to. Yeah. Not that I want to, by the way. Yeah, but yeah, it, if, if you wanted to, no it could kill me. a human. It could um, kill a human. Yeah, it's pretty mad. It's quite heavy as well. But we were talking about this before as well. Funny story, because that show was in London. I had to get back up to Scotland with this and I didn't drive down, I got the train down. <laughs> so I had to get a train back up on the, the train itself with holding what, a five foot sword. <laughs> so I phoned the police before <laughs> uh, I left, and you can take that. I phoned the police before we left to go to say like, right, I'm going to be going on to a, a train with a five foot sword, uh, please. Like, how, how am I going to do this? Yeah, exactly, like, I, I mean, no harm by this. And they were like, well, no, you're not and you're not allowed to they're like it will cause it will simply cause like too much distress and too much kind of like panic between people if they're looking over and i'm just cutting about with a with some strangely tanned guy that looks <laughs> really fucking weird um because it goes all like patchy and everything yeah, looks terrifying yeah. so i look some mad homeless guy um carrying this big massive sword so i was like right how am i getting around this so next morning woke up went to this mad like supply store got myself some brown wrapping paper got myself some tel cell tape got some bin bags so wrapped the whole sword and like a full pack of bin bags then put uh, put the brown wrapping paper around that put cell tape around that i was like right that's holding that spot on brilliant no one's gonna be able to tell us a sword so i'm just kicking about with this by like six foot staff <laughs> covered in brown wrapping paper um and then we're running for the train we get onto the train sit down to the first guy ask him right what do you think it is he's at pool cue uh, I don't know fishing rods like every time we went and sat next to someone would play the game of right what do you think it is no one got it right no one guessed this horse obviously like not I mean, I was, I've done a fucking brilliant you've job you've not got actually. a horse and like yeah, I'm on that with I've, you. I'm not fucking, I've done a good job of actually covering up but then one of the changeovers for the trains was like really fucking fast like we had no time so it was get off the train it was like a pure panic to get off the train itself like we were launching everything about and then we had to run for this next train and it was a busy one as well like the, the train station was really rammed right so i'm sprinting with a sword and i hear something and i feel something i'm like oh, what was that I turn around the wrapping paper had fell off my sword oh. i'm sprinting <laughs> down this train station with a fully exposed sword fucking covered by hundreds of people um a fully exposed um, sword or a fully exposed tony uh, the tiger uh, <laughs> fucking tony the tiger would have been worse um but yeah the sword's literally running about with it. everyone's like panicking looking at me i'm like oh fuck it here <laughs> got onto the next train wrapped it back up and just put my head down <laughs> no one say anything but yeah man, that was very eventful um to say the least but very very good experience enjoyed it and that was kind of like the this like step that was getting my feet wet but into bodybuilding pretty pretty much went well yeah yeah well it went very well because we, we, we won't go through maybe every show individually but you then done what a further four shows after and yeah won so, everything yeah one, took, took the teens class I took another overall as well and that was the UK DFBA Heart of England did you get another sword? didn't get another sword oh. no they didn't do swords that's what the um, 
you'll see it in like the probably like the the thumbnail for mm-hmm. the episodes. And um, there's a big trophy there as well. So um, that's what I get that from. But they had never ever had a team win an overall before, um, because that's what I'm saying. Like a team shouldn't really be in the the kind of discussion for an overall. You've, yeah, you've got no right to be. Yeah, there exactly. Like much, it's, yeah. it's like you shouldn't be in that discussion for like the kind of top at all. Like a team should pretty much be last. So that was the first team to win an overall which is mad like again couldn't really come to terms with it and now that I look back I'm like Jesus Christ that that was pretty nuts Um, but yeah it's been a good season like pretty much there's three different federations across the UK for natural bodybuilding you've got the WNBF you've got the UK DFBA and you've got the BNBF so I've pretty much done a qualifier final qualifier final qualifier final I'm supposed to have a WNBA final this weekend but I'm now doing the, the IMBA one and um, the Romania show because that's like a step up from the UK because if I don't take this opportunity then I won't be able to make it to the natural Olympia so this is like my qualifier for that so um yeah that's the, the season so far and and what so what happens then you're away to Romania this weekend you've won all the shows so you've got a place there so what then happens if you win which you probably will win the show hopefully. in Romania hopefully so um, Romania that is again the INBA universe show so it goes like the UK shows UK's got really high standards like it's one of the hardest places to win bodybuilding shows because it's such a kind of big thing it might not seem like it like bodybuilding's not a huge thing that not a lot of people are into but like the bodybuilding scene in the UK is really big um, so UK shows and then it ramps up to kind of European shows then you've got the universe which is another step up from that and then after the universe you've got the natural Olympia so that's like the pinnacle that's it's like kind of the biggest show that happens once a year and that's from like all these other shows like the European show all the American shows um, all the ones across Europe like completely they're all qualifiers for the natural Olympia so if I win or I think maybe become like top two in the teens class I'll most likely get an invite to go to the natural Olympia um, and I think that is November 9th to November 12th in so, Vegas in Vegas yeah in Vegas that yeah, is that'd be wild man yeah that's insane bro and cool. I've got no doubt in my mind that you're going to be there because hmm. I want want people listening to understand that Josh right now genuinely has like one of the best shapes in the world for your age. Mm-hmm. I'm, I'm right though, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Pretty much. You, you can sounds... say it, bro. Be, yeah, be, I know, be... I'm always like, ugh. But yeah. I know, but, I, know yeah. It's, I know. it must be a bit yeah. cringy for you to say and stuff yeah, yeah. and you don't want to like big yourself up, but you need to big yourself up, bro. There's, yeah. Like I was saying to Josh in the car, there's not many 19-year-olds in the world like you, to be honest, mate. And I mean that for the bottom of my heart. I've honestly never met somebody so dedicated and committed to his job and to coaching and you put your full effort into that but also just the gym and you, you've just got your head screwed on with absolutely everything mate and it's it's yeah. proper good to see man so what what is the what is the future looking like then for josh i don't know if you, you plan too much in the future and i want to ask you a question as well because earlier on you touched on about you know the 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 football kind of analogy with the the natural bodybuilding and yeah, yeah. you know the, not the actual bodybuilding the steroid yeah, one yeah. but the the biggest kind of one so is that something that you are then oh. interested in actually no um right okay it's something that i don't think i'll ever do a couple of reasons first of all um is just kind of anxiety and like guilt around it so i've always been somewhat of an anxious kind of guilty person like went through like kind of a stage of that when i was transitioning from primary school into high school where it was like overthinking everything i'd done and like absolutely anything like if, I, if i'd done anything slightly out of order that i maybe wasn't supposed to do like, oh, if i can't tell someone like oh, i feel so guilty and anxious for that and i feel like i'm not like that anymore but like that's always kind of underlying there and i feel like if I'm pinning steroids into my ass twice a week and knowing that that's going to take years off of my life which realistically it is like maybe people listen to this that are taking gear and it's like or gear a lot of people will think of that as yeah, sniff. Uh, yeah exactly <laughs> but like gear and bodybuilding mm-hmm. in the gym is, is steroids but like that is taking years off your life it's not something that should be taken lightly it's not like oh yeah I go to the gym I want to look good in IBF I'm going to take some steroids this year it's like that could make you never have children that could stop your testosterone production because pretty much like if you're supplying your body and pinning testosterone into your your body then your natural production will slow down because it's actually just getting like put into you instead so if you come off that straight away and if you don't control it and even if just you're not lucky with that you could never produce testosterone again you might never have children and again it's obviously going to take years and years and years off your life so no one 
that I'm doing that every night going to bed I'd be like what the fuck am I doing in my life like genuinely like just overthinking feeling anxious sick and guilty about that and then also the fact that I'm shit for your needles as well okay. like so scared of them they used to be sound but then in school we got like a, a jab or a jag sorry and the woman puts it into my shoulder then someone nudges her like while it was in there and like it moved inside my shoulder oh. yeah I mean like disgusting every time I think about it now but ever since then like every time I get a needle I get that feeling I mean like there was a mat on the floor and it was like if you ever like get scared or like you feel like sick or anything like lying on that floor I was like <laughs> pussies that wouldn't use that see like five minutes later I was like yeah. lying on the floor like <laughs> fucking yellow like honestly horrific and ever since then just been terrified of needles so Nah, I don't think it will. That's that's really interesting, mate, because it was what one of the questions that I wanted to ask you and I've never asked you that before. Yeah, yeah. Because to me from an outsider, being in your position it maybe feels too tempting to not do it. Yeah. And that isn't me trying to project anything on you're no, telling no, you yeah. what to do, hundred percent not, and I can totally respect your decision. It's more just trying to understand because when you are when you are outlining the, the gulf and differences between the the kind of steroid bodybuilding and the natural so bodybuilding. So much more funding, so much more like like traction on it and social media and everything that is. Wait, like, so you know that like if you were to go down that route, you would yeah. it would probably speed things up or it would make you kind of quicker. Yeah. And that's yeah. why I admire you so much. And you touched on something you know that, that I wanted to touch on as well. In my opinion, obviously I don't take steroids, obviously. <laughs> but, right yeah. now. but there's uh, there's far too many people out there that take them, in my opinion. And I, I take my hat off to people that take steroids and, you know, it's their life, they dedicate themselves to yeah, it. Yeah, if, if you're an extremely highly competitive level bodybuilder, yeah, yeah. fair enough. Yeah, because th- th- I think, just referring back to my mum and dad, sorry, mum and dad, if you're listening, <laughs> I'm bashing you the whole episode. <laughs> but <laughs> they, they always say, oh, taking steroids, but that's cheating. And it's I don't, the exact same as mine. And yeah. I don't think it is as simple as that because it's not as if you just start jagging your ass and you you look you like a Hulk. Up, yeah, 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 like you still need to be probably, if not even more dedicated because you know, right, okay, I'm actual kind yeah. of putting my health at this to do that. Yeah, you get more in the line. But then you, to me, you've just got your head screwed on the shoulders in the sense, right, yeah, I actually know that it would probably further me, potentially my career or my, you know, my social media or whatever, but is that really worth, you know, yeah, my health? And, off. No, no, not, not at all. At all. I'm going to run for a piss. Yeah, that's me, that's I drank so much water. <laughs> that's um, We're going to yeah, wrap up actually to... in a second anyways, right, mate, so that's cool. I'm very, very sorry to be interrupting the episode. I know you guys are loving it. However, I need to tell you about the official sponsors of the Don Diaries, which is Black Rooster. They have chains all over Scotland so that you can get all of your pity meals and you can stay spicy. So Josh, Josh has returned from his piss. Yeah, as well. yeah. <laughs> no, but th- thanks for answering that, mate. Because um, yeah, I've I've always wondered that about about you. To be honest, like I said, to me from the outsider, I understand why people don't take steroids. But oh well, what, what am I trying to say? I understand. I don't know what I'm trying to say. Well, uh, a lot of people also say to me as well, like. Well, because you've been so successful in this first season and a lot of that being down to my structure and my like shape, like the kind of potential if I took steroids, like the potential for me would be ridiculous. Yeah, that that's because, what Yeah, like it's very it's such a tempting thing, like knowing that if I were to do that, like could that mean down the line that I could be what, an Olympian? Olympian? Yeah, 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 exactly. Yeah. Because like I've kind of done so well this season, it's like Right, Jesus, I, I could be very, very good there. But again, is that to me worth the trade of years of my life? Like when I'm a, a wee old man with my grandkids and if I'm just fucking off because I died of steroids, it's like, is that worth it? And to me, no, I don't think it is. And again, that's what people don't think about and realise like how much it actually impacts your health. Like it's not a easy, light decision to make. It's like your whole health that you're putting on the line it's, it's a lot that you actually need to think about and for me I just don't think it's worth the, the trade off for that I think I've got a massive kind of opportunity to grow with a natural bodybuilding like realistically I've only been training for what two or three years and only what a year and a half of that being proper good training so to think about like what I could do naturally and what I could do in the natural scene like setting new standards and like showing people what's actually kind of possible over the next 10 years like that excites me more than me like and realistically as well like if you want to be like a a really high level 
assisted bodybuilder you can't just take like a little bit of testosterone it's like you need to be pounding year and like mm. yes there's ways to be smart with it but realistically if i'm sitting at like 250 300 pounds of just like sheer muscle mass i can't just be running a nice little nice easy cycle it's going to be pretty aggressive so it's like for me to be at the very very top of that game it would need to be like that's my health pretty much on the line and a lot of like bodybuilders have to end up pulling out of it and like ian valier i don't know if you know him or if like anyone listening knows him it's c bums yeah yeah i know him yeah c bums wife's brother mm -hmm. um he's just pulled back from bodybuilding because like he was like right i'm not winning mr olympia it doesn't excite me as much anymore competing and i know how much is actually impacting my health right now so i'm going to stop it mm -hmm. and for me i don't want to get to that position to to put my whole life into it maybe not get to the true true pinnacle and waste years of my life so instead natural bodybuilding the next time that i'll be on stage will be 2026 after this one so i'll be coming back as a junior bodybuilder so the age cap for that is 23 years old so it means by the time 2026, 2026 sorry when i compete again i'll be an older junior and hopefully again be able to take it to like the natural olympia type level and then from there just grow as much as possible that's what you need in bodybuilding like and natural bodybuilding sorry that like you can't just like compete season after season after season because being at this body fat and does not feel good it's not healthy healthy for you to recover from this and for your hormones to get back into a good position like it's, it takes a long time if you compete over and over and over you're going to be good so just time and growth and knowing that potential there is a natural to be able to set new limits and and new standards for that is pretty cool i find that more interesting yeah for sure mate and i think if you're thinking about applying for the 2026 bodybuilding show don't even bother because this man is going <laughs> to win everything man absolutely it's everything. pretty cool there's a, there are a lot of the teens from this year will be doing the same thing as well though, yeah. so it'll be cool to see a lot of them and obviously again like teens they don't have the muscle maturity to be able to get into proper condition a lot of the time just because they've not had enough time so it'd be cool to see them when they have a lot more muscle on them because a few of them have got really good shape but they just couldn't get into proper condition so it'll be good and like there's a really good community around it as well like throughout the people that i've competed with it's not like you're bumped not backstage you're like you're uh, uh, yeah. staring people down like i mean who wants it it's like you're literally just sitting chatting and enjoying it like a lot of people think it's like that but a really good community around it. Yeah, and and to me personally, I think I've got no doubt in my mind, and I really do respect your decision for not going down the route of, of using steroids because I think you should now look at, at it, right? There's nobody really that's like the pinnacle pioneer of natural bodybuilding. Yeah. This is where Josh Campbell is going to come in 100%, mate, because like I said, your growth and everything that's been going on in such a short amount of time has been amazing to see. So I would always say, right, look at how much you've grown in that short amount of time. Yeah. Don't think too far Instead into the future. Instead of looking at it as like, oh, prep's going to be over. What if I fall off? Maybe think it or look at it as like, right, this is me just to start. Like, this is me like only just getting Bro, into it. Literally, get... I know. They're yeah. literally just beginning, which is an insane thing. Yeah. yeah. And listen, mate, it's been a very, very good conversation. I really enjoyed it. Um, like I, I said, I believe we've spoke for so long. I, <laughs> I went, I went for a pee there, and I was like, "How long are we speaking for? Like half an hour, forty minutes?" Looked up at the timer, and it's what? How long is it? And I, I, nearly an hour, like forty-five minutes, I think. Man, but <laughs> I'm so it's, sorry, it's this. No, don't be daft. It's this. People want to hear from you, hundred percent. This so, room's like a TARDIS as well. There's no windows honestly, or anything, so you end up just having a conversation. You're like, "Oh, for the whole day. shit, what's the time?" But uh, no, listen, mate, you are a very, very interesting guy, mate, and I, and I mean that mm -hmm. in a in a good way because. Yeah, like I've said a few times now, there's not many people your age that would be so switched on and so dedicated and genuinely such a lovely, nice guy, mate. And Thank without you. sounding cliche or cringe or anything, your success couldn't have been happening to a more hardworking, um, better guy, mate. So it's been good to see. And really Josh Campbell is going to be f the future Mr. Natural Olympia, yes. my man. Yes, Josh, Thank thanks you. for coming on, bro. I really appreciate Thank it. You. Cheers, brother. Thank you.